me, my baking kits, it's the ingredients that go in, the bags that you put the ingredients in, the recipe card, any equipment like piping bags and the actual box, the packaging. So I have to work out how much it's going to be for all of those individual items, add it all up together and then multiply it by a certain amount to make sure I'm making enough profit, not only to cover the cost of that product but also to run my business and to create a salary for myself. But then there's all the sort of extrinsic value to that product, so your branding, um, so things like getting your trademark, all the legalities of it, trademarking, all of the the ingredients, like your recipe, if you create recipes, your recipe has a value. So I've won Great Taste Awards for two of my recipes. So that increases the value of that product. Because if you walk into a shop and you see one thing that's got an award-winning logo on it and another product that doesn't, you know, which one are you most likely to sort of head towards? So, you know, there's those little things to, to consider around, around it. Um, it doesn't happen overnight, it can take a long time, you know, it's taken me about three or four years to develop the branding and, and the packaging design and things like that. Um, what about my top tips? So more on the legality, so I'm in food and drink, so there are things where, you know, I need a level two food hygiene, uh, you need to be registered with the council, you need to be on top of your ingredients labelling, um, things like that, insurance and, and stuff. So, you know, there's, there's things things like that to consider. Um, what else am I, like, my other top tip, it sounds so cliche, but like, don't give up. So I enter competitions and go talk to a lot of people to see if my products are, are suitable to go in their shops and you will a lot of the time you'll be rejected or you won't win and you're just and you then you're like oh like is this the right thing am I doing the right thing and you just have to keep going every day you have to keep going and you'll have some really good days where you win and then you're like okay I'm doing the right thing here and it, it's working so yeah that's my don't give up my other top tip Some advantages of running your own business. I think I've covered this already. It, it is just, you're owning your own thing. And I think there's a great feeling of empowerment with that. Um, and having people want to buy your product and come and talk to you about things that you're working on. That's, that's a you know, good, a good thing, an advantage. Um, being your own boss, like massive advantage is, or, you know, you're in charge of your own time. So like I can go to the gym or go for a swim uh, during the day when it's quiet and pay off peak rates rather than doing the like 5 p.m. dash um, after work with everyone else. Uh, you know, you can go shopping when it's quiet. Uh, you can meet your friends for lunch. Um, I've got a friend with two young kids and I can go spend the day with them if I want to because then I know I can make up the time elsewhere in the week. So massive, massive advantage doing that. Um, some of the disadvantages, um, you're incredibly poor for <laughs> the first few years. Um, a lot of my money has gone into um, in, like investing into the business. Um, and it, like not just buying stock and, and things, but just just to live on and survive whilst I run, set up the business. So um, there's a bit of a disadvantage there. So a lot of my friends have got really good jobs and go on holiday and want to go away for weekends. And, you know, there's I, I try and I try and go, but I have to spend as little little as money as possible. So there's some opportunities that you know I miss out on with my friends because I've chosen this but they're all really supportive like that's the amazing thing is that they're very supportive and understand what I'm doing so you know give it a few more years you know hopefully it will be successful and things so so there's that um is there any more disadvantages I think some of the hours that you can work can be quite random and long but again I mean it's a balance you can then take a day off whenever you want and go see friends and or, or whatever so 
you know, I think, uh, you know, I have to sell at some Christmas markets over the next couple of weeks and I'm not looking forward to standing in the freezing cold for a few hours, but it's, it's, I'm prepared to do it because um, it's Christmas and people are going to be buying gifts and presents for friends and family. And I believe that my baking kits and recipe books will make really good Christmas presents. And, uh, you know, I want my business to succeed and make money. So I, I always try and put a positive spin on the negatives because, you know, it's a good way of getting through things. I think one of the important lessons that you learn when you start off doing sort of entrepreneur type classes is most successful businesses have solved a problem and uh, either better so people are willing to pay more money or cheaper so they're willing to come and buy your product over somebody else's product or service so I don't think you need any specific experience or training I mean there's, there are schemes like the Young uh, Enterprise Awards and things where kids as young as like 14 or 15 are creating products in school and then selling them at Christmas markets so you know I don't don't think you need anything specific I mean for my business I'm a geologist and I like baking so I was able to combine my two passions and build my business um, would anybody else have been able to do that maybe not unless they have the same sort of you know, university education and, and passion for baking as I do, yeah, I don't really know. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are solving a problem or making life easier for someone and doing it at a fair price that they're willing to pay for that, then anyone can run a business. It doesn't really matter how old you are or how much education you've had. So, um, and the other thing you learn is um, you know, it's all very well having an idea, but also the businesses that succeed are the people who have actually, you know, put that idea into motion. So if you have an idea and you think it will help people, then try and go out and do it because there might be 10 other people sitting around going, oh, I could do that, but they don't really bother trying. So... I don't really like living with regrets so I think it's just you have to make thousands of decisions when you're growing up and deciding what you're going to do and it's the same with starting up a business so you just have to sometimes make decisions see how it works out and then change it and adapt as you go on and you know sometimes the older you get the more experience you have you know if something's going to work or not but more often than not you have no idea if it's going to work so you just have to try so I really, I don't wish for anything to be different. Like this is just the way it is and this is where I am now. Um, but one thing that's changed a lot throughout my business is the branding and then like the name of the business. So I, if there was probably one thing that I would change is just having that sort of like nailed down and decided a bit sooner really, because I'd then be a bit further ahead in my business. Um, so I, I said I'd show you, so this is my um, recipe book, I'm trying to show you so that it doesn't reflect on the light. So this is my business logo here, so I use chemical elements to type out Sci recipes and I, as you can see I sort of use teal and orange and purple, so very gender neutral colours and then um, this is Einstein, my logo, so you know the, the logo came first, uh, Sci recipes logo came first. Um, and then Einstein probably came about a year later. Uh, so, you know, it, it's taken a long time to develop and come up with these. Um, but it's just one of those things that that's just how I did, you know, it, I just needed to sit and think about it and come up with the right thing that suited my business. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so resources. Um, so networking to start with, I think, is a really great way. In Nottingham, there's the Food and Drink Forum. So they do classes and you can meet people who are running very similar businesses to you. 
because uh, sometimes you might have somebody that's like an app designer and they just have completely different needs for their business than you as a food and drink producer. So sometimes it's quite handy.